Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Remember a couple of months ago, Chris and I went out in the van to pick up some upholstery fabric and in there I received hundreds of these big squares or rectangles of fabric. So there's lots of plain ones, uh, some printed ones as well. Rather than cutting up these pieces, I wanted to try and make something big enough that I could use this whole piece with. And that would save my cutting time for things that I make in the shop. So what I've made are really big giant boxed bags or utility bags. I'm making these out of one piece of fabric. Well, actually it's going to be lined. So you've got a main piece of fabric and the lining and it's going to be in this size. I have made a whole heap of these for the shop already. The tutorial I'm going to show you today is actually going to be done with quilting cotton rather than this upholstery fabric that I really love to use all the time. Hang around, I'm gonna show you how to make these giant utility bag with quilting cotton and they're all fully lined and there's no bindings on the inside seam. So I've got a couple of tricks for you. So stick around, I'll show you what to do. I'll put the centimeter measurements up on the screen along with this. So we've got a 21 inch zipper and you can use a regular zip as well with your slider already on there. I, this is just what I prefer to use. So we've got one zip, I've got two sliders you can put one or two on here, but I'm going with two because of the size of the bag. I have an 11 inch piece of strapping or webbing, which I'm going to be using for the handle. This is one inch wide. If you want to make a handle out of your fabric, then you'll need 11 inches long and four inches wide. Fold it together and then fold it together again to hide all your raw edges. 11 inches by four inches if you're making your handle. And we need a couple of tabs as well. These are two and a half inches long. They'll be folded in half later. These are just the webbing as well. If you want to use your fabric for your tabs, again, two and a half inches long by four inches wide and fold them together. This is the main fabric. So this is the outside bag fabric. This and the batting are both going to be 21 inches by 23 inches. And the lining fabric is going to be 21 inches by 23 and a half inches. I have a little bit of a cheat technique for closing up the bottom edge. And that is why this lining piece is half an inch bigger. If you're using a fusible batting, go and fuse that onto your outside piece of fabric. And I have to confess, this isn't an iron-on batting. I've accidentally gone and cut a piece of batting that is used, I don't know, in embroidery or applique, but it's still going to do the job. It doesn't matter whether it's fusible or not. Whenever you're making these utility bags or boxed bags, the zip usually goes on the end that is the shortest. So in this case, I've got 23 inches or 23 by 21 the zip will go on the 21 inch side. So if you're doing a boxed bag that is 10 by 12 inches, you're probably going to be wanting to put the zip on the 10 inch side. And the 12 inches allows you to bring the whole bag over. It'll give you more volume in your bag. Once you've fused your batting to the wrong side of the main fabric, take your zip and we're going to place it with the zipper teeth faced down and we're putting it on the short side of our fabric. Place the zipper teeth down and we're going to clip that together. So just place it evenly over the top. It doesn't matter if it overhangs a little bit on the ends because we can trim that after. Once you've clipped the zip on, we can tear this zipper tape off now and bring that to the other end. And we can clip this one in place as well. We've got the wadding and the fabric and the zip clipped together. Take your lining piece and with the right sides together, you clip the lining piece onto the zip. I've got a label on here, so I'm actually putting my labels on the inside of my bag this time. This is the right side of my fabric. We'll place the right sides together, line that up evenly along the edges there and along the top, and then you can clip that in place, all the layers together. Go to the other side, and you're going to line that up as well, and you'll notice that there's a little bit of bulk, extra bulk in the center here. Ignore that for now, we'll sort that out shortly. Clip this in place, double check that you've caught everything, stitch down both edges to secure all those layers. I've got my zipper foot on and I'm just going to stitch really close to the lump that you see 
on the um, where the zipper is there. Do a back stitch at the beginning and the end. That has secured my batting, my lining fabric and the main fabric with the zipper in between. Turn it around and repeat the same for the other side. Now before we top stitch this bag, we're going to take the lining away from the main body of the bag and line up the seams on the lining just here. And you just want to put a clip in place just for the time being. So I've got the two lining pieces lined up just on the edge there. Flip it over. We'll do the same on this side. Even it out. When we close up and turn our bag through later, we're going to be turning it through the opening at the bottom of the bag. But there's no opening yet, is there? So let's make one. We've got this folded out, so we've got that nicely centered at the bottom there. You can put some clips in place just to secure it so that you know where the fold is at the bottom. We're going to leave an opening of about that much, so it's maybe four or five inches. Go to the machine and using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch this fold closed. So start at the top, we'll do a back stitch, come to here, back stitch, come start here again and do the same thing along here. So what you're doing is creating a false seam and once we've actually done that we can come along here and we'll just slice open this very top edge which will be the opening for the bag. It just helps prevent having to put two pieces of fabric together. This will be the bottom base of our bag and this is the section that I'm going to leave unstitched okay so even though we've got the fold here we're going to stitch from the top to here leave this opening of about five inches, stitch from here to here. So there's our opening here, which is still closed. We've got it stitched all the way up to here. Take some scissors or a seam ripper, whatever you like, and just start about an inch into where you've, start, where you've actually sewn. Make a small nick and you can put your scissors inside that nick. So you can see my scissors, the tip of my scissors is just inside there. I'm going to just slice straight across up to about an inch beyond the stitched line. So there's the opening at the bottom of my bag and that's what I'll use for turning through later on. So it's just a little bit easier than having to go and line everything up and cut extra pieces of fabric. Now we need to top stitch. So take these clips away, turn this back around so that you can see the fabric. And we want to top stitch all the way across from one end to the other. And you're going to secure the layers of fabric so the lining will be stitched down and so will be the main fabric. Now the easiest way to do this is when you have this on your machine, just hold on to this with your fingertips but I like to put my arm on the inside. So I'll just stick my arm in here. And as I'm sewing, I'm using my arm to pull my fabric taut. So I'm actually, you can see here, I'm using my arm as a guide to pull the layers of fabric away from the zip. And then I'll stitch along like that. Okay, make sure that your lining fabric is away from the zip and the top is away from the zip as well. I'm going to use my regular foot to do the top stitching because I find it's just a little bit easier to guide that along the edge of my fabric. I'm using the edge of my foot or the center of my foot as my guide and I'll start sewing. There's the top stitch done on the one side and we'll repeat that for the other side. All right, the top stitching is done on both sides. We've got that finished nice and neatly along there. You can see the center opening just here. This is where we'll be turning our bag through later on. What we need to do now is put our zip sliders on. The best way I find to put my sliders on is on a nice hard flat surface. Have the main fabric facing up with your zip on this side. Bring the other side around and over the top and you can see the lining is on the outside and line up the sides of the zip here and I'm going to have the curved 
section of my zip going on first. So I'm going to put that onto my slider just until it meets a little bit of resistance. Once that's on, I'm actually going to run this all the way off to the other side. So here's my zip. I'm just going to run it straight off and I've closed up the zip. I'm doing this because I actually want to put two sliders on and I need them to go in at opposite ends from each other. And it's easier if you've got the zip nice and level all the way across. Open this out partially, take the curved edge, again, put that in first. And I'm just going to slide that across till it gets to about the middle. And now I'm going to come with another slide from the opposite end. Open that out again and bring that across to meet the one that's already there. And when they come together, you'll see that the teeth will separate here. Okay, so we've got two curved edges facing each other. If I turn that the right way around, the zips will open out away from each other. This is a good time now to make sure you have at least a partial opening because if you don't do this now you're going to forget like I do all the time you'll find it really difficult to turn your bag through and also box the corners so have this open at least part of the way now so we've got a little bit of an opening here what we're going to do now is separate the lining from the main fabric and the batting take your lining piece here and you've got your batting and your main fabric separate those Pull the batting and main through. So what you've got is your lining section here and the main body of your bag just here. Find the center point. We've already got the center point here because we've put a seam down. Line up your fabric on the very edge there. Mark a center. You can mark that with a pen or a pin, however you like, but you want to mark the center on the main fabric. Open it out and where that center mark is, line that up in the center section of your zip. Put a clip in place just for the time being and you've got your lining here. Grab the lining and your main. Okay, what happened you ask? Remember when I was in the other sewing room and I told you that the camera kept falling on my head? Well, this time I've knocked it flying across the room. So the tripod fell off my work table, knocked my clips flying and everything's gone all over the place. But it didn't land on my head. Let's do that again. Well, maybe not the part where I drop the tripod. I've got the clip in place here and we want to line up this false seam with the center of the zip. Just pop those layers together. Then you can distribute this nice and evenly. With this side clip down now, grab one of your tabs, fold it in half, and we want the raw edges facing the raw edges here. So the folded edge, you just want to slide that in between the layers and you want to slide this in between the layers of the main fabric not between the layers of the lining okay put your tab in between the layers of your main fabric in the center there right in the middle where the zip is and secure that in place do the same for the other side you want to find the center of your fabric place the center of your zip over the top you can put your tab in place first so that will go in your main fabric Take the lining piece and that false seam, lay that directly over the top and then even that out across. So now we're ready to go and stitch this all the way down here and along this side as well. Now before we do that, we are going to be boxing our corners soon. And rather than stitching from one end to the next and wasting your thread as well as your stitching time, mark two inches from the bottom or from the side edge you just make a mark there same on each side it's just a rough mark and we're going to go to the machine and we'll be stitching from here to here we're going to be cutting these corners out when we do the boxing uh, so from here you want to do a back stitch along here and do a back stitch along there make sure you do that back stitch at least on the inside of this section here so you want to have a few stitches there holding that in place so that when you open out your corners, it doesn't unravel. We've got a zip underneath here and we've also got our tabs. So where we do uh, the stitching along here, I'll stitch along, then I'll go back again and then forward. So I'll do one, two and three and then continue on down. Let's stitch that together. I've got 
my batting, my lining and the main fabric all enclosed here and I've got my little uh, tabs for the end of my bag as well. So everything is enclosed here. Now rather than doing a quarter inch seam I'm going to do just slightly bigger, not quite half an inch, I don't think it needs that much, but I'm going to do just a little bit over a quarter of an inch seam. If I were using upholstery fabric instead of this quilting cotton, I'd actually go and double stitch this. Okay, you can see I've stitched from here to here and I've done a back stitch at the beginning and the end and I haven't worried about stitching this because these bits are going to be cut off. I have a two inch template. Because I'm making such a big boxed bag, I'd like to have a two inch corner. Uh, and if you're going to make something smaller, you might only want one and a half inches or even one inch. So where the stitching line is, if you continue that line down, we're going to line up our template on the edge of the stitching line there. And we'll do the same on each of the four corners. Now we only have to make this mark on one side, we don't have to turn it around because we've got everything already stitched together. And remember you want your template to be in line with the stitching line that you've got along here. The fold, you just put the template straight on the fold. We can cut these out now. And you can see I'm just going in one direction to do my cuts and then turning rather than having to double handle everything as well. This helps me with my assembly line sewing as well. Now we have our four corners that we need to box. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this part is a little bit tricky, but once you've done this a couple of times, it's really, really simple. It's just a little bit difficult to get your head around it the first time. We have our strapping, which is for our handle. Mark a pin or a clip in the center of the main fabric. So this is our main fabric here. Find the center or the, on the fold there. Put a pin mark in there for the time being and do the same on this side as well. We're only doing this at one end because we're only going to be putting a handle in at one end. So whether you mark that line with a pen or a pin, it's up to you. Take your strapping or the handle that you've chosen to fold and stitch together, slide that in across and lay that across the center there. So you want the strapping or the handle to be centered with the pin. Put a clip in place there, take the other side, make sure that the strapping is the right orientation so you don't want it twisted and lay that over on the other side. So our strapping is just sitting inside there. Take the seam section here and bring that to the center of the strapping. Start opening your batting and your main fabric so that the center seam there matches with the center of your strapping and that this is nice and straight. Clip that side to the other side. Just leave your lining out of the way just for the second and line up that side as well. You wanna have that nice and even. So we've got our main and our batting clipped together on the corner. We want to also secure this to the same piece of fabric. Open out the lining piece and take this corner here and this corner here and open them out. Now before we do that, let's just go into the opening here and make sure our zip is open almost all the way. If you have it closed or too far closed it's going to make it really difficult to manipulate the corners so we'll just open that zip almost all the way go back to this fold here and open it out and when you open that out fan that out or spread it out so that that's in line with the main fabric match up the corners And then you can start matching up the rest of it. So now we have the lining piece of fabric 
and the main fabric with the batting all together and this is going to be stitched all in one go and I do like to double stitch this as well so that's one corner done now you can go and do the other corners so this end of the bag has the strapping on it for the handle bring the center together in line with the center of the handle just secure that again now because this is a fiddly part I'm going to show it to you a couple of times just pinch that out so that it's nice and straight same on the other end take your lining piece of fabric open it out grab that corner there and you can see it's already starting to line up and you can just clip it straight over the batting so it's getting easier so that's one end done and we'll flip it over and do the other side now the other side doesn't have a handle it's just got the little tab sitting at the end so this one's a little bit easier to work with open it out again find the side and same with this and we have one more corner to do so they do get much easier as you go okay so we now have a nice jumbled mess here but we can take that to the machine stitch all of these down as I said I like to double stitch them then the bag's finished and all we need to do is turn it the right way around that one's in place and I'll just flip it over and do it again I just like my seams to be really secure and I'll continue the same process for all four corners and the bag is now completely finished all we have to do is turn it the right way around and close the opening inside okay let's turn this through poke all the corners out once you're happy with that grab that false bottom that we created earlier pinch that out and we can stitch this closed it's up to you if you want to whip stitch this closed by hand I'm going to take that to the machine and close it up my opening is just here and you can see I've got my raw edges just folded underneath I'm going to start stitching this closed about half an inch to an inch on the side that's already closed and I'm going to stop sewing about half an inch to an inch beyond this opening here so that's stitched really close to the very edge there you can probably barely see it and that is our bag completely finished let's have a look how it's turned out all right we're completely finished now I'm going to turn it the wrong way around so there's the lining on the inside no raw edges on the side you haven't had to go and make any bindings for it all the raw edges are neatly tucked away on the inside with the lining and the main body of the bag actually stitched together turn it the right way around and if you've got two zips you can close that up with both of your zips or just with the one it will work really well either way there's your handle here your little tabs on the end and your zipper you can actually attach some cord to these zipper sliders as well jobs done so there you go these are just some of the bags that I've been making in the past few days all of these ones here have been made with upholstery fabric and I haven't actually put any batting in these at all so if I show you the inside of these all the seams are completely enclosed and you've got no exposed bindings or raw seams so as I said these ones don't have any batting or stabilizer in them at all but because they're upholstery fabric they sit quite firmly and I don't think they really need to have any stabilizer in them this one however was done with the quilting cotton so I've used just a gray check quilting cotton on the outside on the inside I've got a sort of a moss or seaweed colored green on the inside I've already had these hanging up in the shop today so I've just put some paper in there to keep it nice and full and this one has the batting inside the, the main fabric I think these have turned out pretty good from that one piece of fabric that I showed you at the beginning of the video rather than cutting it up and making smaller bags because I've got so many small pieces of fabric I thought I might as well make something bigger 
And I think it'll also be something really versatile for the guys as well. Uh, I don't have enough in the shop for them and using the plain upholstery fabric, I think these are going to be really good blokey colours for them or textures for them. How long do they take me? Well, the first one took me an hour because I was trying to get my head around what I was going to do. The next few I made in a batch just to see how my production line would go and it took me about 40 minutes per bag. I've got it down to 30 minutes per bag. Now that includes cutting time as well. I'm still doing my bags in multiples so when I cut a fabric out I'll cut out enough fabric to do half a dozen bags rather than just do one bag at a time. So that's how I can keep my time down. If I were just doing one bag of course it would probably take me an extra 10 or 15 minutes by the time I source my fabric and cut everything out. One bag averages out at about half an hour. Now this time round we're actually going to have some fabric costs because I actually purchased this fabric. It wasn't a rescued or recycled fabric. So in this one here I've got brand new fabric, new zips and handles so everything is brand new. The retail value of the fabric and the zips and the sliders and the handle and my label because I do have a label on the inside the retail fabric of one of these is roughly $20. That's Australian dollars. And as I said, it takes me about half an hour to make these and I charge my labor rate out at $45 an hour. But I've decided that rather than just making these a $40 bag, I'm actually going to take a punt. I've priced these at $55 just because they're so big and they're quite robust. They'll fit shoes, they'll fit your knitting supplies, they'll fit all sorts of things. So I think that they're quite versatile. I've priced them at $55. I'll see how they go. I can always go down in price if they don't do any good. I will see how they go. What did you think? It's such a huge bag. I think it's going to have lots of uses. What would you use it for? And let me know what you think. Catch you next time.